I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's the December 19th, 2016 Committee on <coughs> Resources monthly meeting. Um, and Pam, will you please call the roll? Councilor Bidwell? Here. Councilor Carney is present. Councilor Klein? Here. Councilor Sharon? Here. I will note we are being audio and video recorded. I'm also going to note that there is no public here for public comment, so we are going to move on to the next item, which is approving the minutes of the previous meeting, which which just came in today. I haven't read them over, so yeah. My my suggestion was to postpone. I saw that. Yeah. Postpone. Is everything until everyone? The next I think that makes sense. I've been looking over here. Okay. We need a motion to postpone. We do. No. A vote to postpone. Is there a second? Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor of this one? Aye. Aye. All right. So we will vote on those in January. Um, so we're going to move on to our the meat of this meeting, which is reviewing and revising with the hope of finalizing the draft um, report that Councillor Bidwell put together and I contributed minorly to. Um, uh, does everybody have a copy or is everyone seen I have it? a copy in my phone here. I can read it. It's to your packet. Oh, it's in here. Oh, great. Thanks to Pam. Yes. Thank you, Pam. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So thank you very much, Councillor Bidwell, for all the work that you put into doing this. Certainly. Um, I guess just quickly, you had sort of posed a question to me that I don't really entirely know the answer to, which was, what's the next step with this? Um, as with the previous report that we submitted, it was, I submitted it to the council president and vice president because they were the ones who had um, who'd requested the study. And then it was noted at the council meeting that it had been submitted. So I will be in touch with the council president to ask what the process is with this. I assume it's the same thing, but since this actually includes recommendations um, and possibility of referral of things, um, it would be good to figure out more clearly what what the you know what actual next steps are with it. Um, so I will be in touch with him, and I will I will get back to you on that. But for now, um, let's review this and see where we are. Do you? Do you want to give an overview, or do you want to talk about it at all? I don't know that much of an overview is necessary because, in, 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 in partly, it just fleshes out basically where we were a month ago with a, you know, a, a two-page outline is now a three and a half-page report. So I took quite seriously your my colleague's suggestion that it doesn't need a lot. So don't, don't kill yourself on it. Just just add a little, uh, a, a, a little bit of detail and a little bit of of context which 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 it has done and, and I drafted it as you suggest Councilor Sharp not not knowing when we say this is what we're recommending exactly what that means do, do we need to get the entire council's blessing before we go forward with passing along these recommendations or do we just do we as a committee pass along these recommendations I guess that's what we'll wait to see okay we'll um, clarify that we'll also clarify how we submit this to the mayor I mean just when I give it to the president and vice president, do I also just include it to the mayor or is there another process for which he gets it since a lot of this is drafted? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go. So, no, I don't, I, I, I would suggest that we just, we just dive, dive into it section by section um, and, and for, 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 for discussion and suggested revision, I, 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 I know Councilor Klein has some, some, some suggestions that she wants to, to make. Mm -hmm. And I would just um, point out, at, at, right at the uh, beginning portion of the report is we have some variety of possible recommendations and where we talk about preparing a draft ordinance and resolution, um, it might be better for me to clarify where we're at with that aspect. Um, in terms of the possible wage theft or workload issue, because I have some updates on that. 
Okay, should we, uh, do you want to talk about that when we get to the worker sure. issues? Sure, we can do that. Until Sunday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so in terms of sort of this first section, which is the framing of the study, um, are there any thoughts or suggestions on that or anything that um, maybe inadvertently got left out or? Well, I think that we're probably crossed out preparing a draft council ordinance just um, based on some of the um, <coughs> charter considerations and things like that. And it, and it looks like it's looking towards a resolution thing. So we might want to, unless we have another well, another it. area where we might. Ordinance, no? It was the CPA that was a possible ordinance change. And because we're talking about the CPC bringing that forward, there would be no change in that ordinance. The other is just an order with regard to licenses. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So probably not. Probably not an ordinance. At least with regard to the. To the because we're not. It's there isn't something in our purview for which to. Except there is an order. An order? Yeah. An order, a resolution from the council, and. Proposed. Executive order that will and come from the mayor. Right. Okay. Okay. Noted. Okay. And so, I mean, in that place, do you want to, would you want to say preparing an order or or um, support for an administrative order or anything like that or just strike that? I think the draft resolution probably is enough to um, cover the issue. The order that will accompany that when it comes will be specifically regard to uh, licenses. Why don't we just say, um, get rid of preparing a draft council ordinance and under preparing a draft council resolution say, and the order. Very good. Okay. Well, would it be a council order or would we be supporting an order from that? They'll be both because oh. there are some licenses that fall under the license commission, some fall under the city clerk and some fall under the City Council. And so for those that fall under the City Council, we'll need the Council Order. And for those that fall under the License Commission, they even, that's why I'll, I'll, I'll update gotcha. that in terms of the details okay. that came out of that most okay. recent conversation. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> um, so there's nothing further on that first section. Um, moving on to arts, downtown events, and promotion. I have some comments. And a lot of my stuff is actually just um, grammatical things or slight little edits, but I'll just share them all. I <clears throat> did them in uh, track changes, so I can also send this on mm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, simple things. Uh, in the first paragraph, I, um, right after the colon, topics such as mm -hmm. better promotion, I removed the S there. I think that yep. might have just been a little typo. Yep. Um, and then the only other thing in this section, I think, is a question about arts walks. I don't think we use that term. I haven't heard that term in Northampton. I, arts Night Out is the mm -hmm. second Friday oh, um, of night every out. month. So I You're think right. that, that was we're intent. referring to Arts Night Out. Right. Um, and Let's see. I, I mean, again, there are just a couple other typo things that I don't think it's useful for me to, but they're in my um, track changes, so I'll okay, send that right. word. In the second paragraph, um, I think we need a little bit of emphasis where you have bolded um, with the cooperation of the mayor and so forth, Councillor Bidwell. Um, I would like to see something like uh, to host a one-time forum on topics of downtown arts, events, promotion, and how city government, i.e. city council, the mayor's office, city staff, and city committees and commissions can potentially play an enhanced role in these realms. And I know that on your bullet points a little further down, you included what can the city council do, but it felt to me like um, in that bolded area that we want to talk about all those things, arts, events, promotion, but most important is what role city government can play. So I worded it the way I just read it, and we can, you know, you're welcome to all of this. I'm just kind well, of Well, I, 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 I would certainly welcome that. And, okay. And, and, uh, I, I agree with everything you've said so far, and 
Okay. So exact wording again, yeah. when I send this out, you can decide if you want to accept, reject, or whatever, but those that's just something that felt important to me, which means that if, if we do put it up there, we could get rid of the last bullet point, or we could just add to that last bullet point, what can the city council do? What I would say, what can the city council and other city offices, committees, and commissions do to be of additional help? Because if we're, especially if we're asking the mayor to host some of these, we're clearly not just talking about the council. We're talking about kind of city mm -hmm. offices. And also, you know, for the arts especially, we're talking about the arts council, which is, you know, a city function. So it's just mm -hmm. good to note all of those things. Um, good. Very helpful comments. Yeah, that's it for that, for that section. But also, I didn't get a chance to say, I was so impressed with this, and it's so clear how much work you put into it, both of you. It's just, you know, to go back and look at all the minutes and pull out the salient points, that takes a lot of time. So I really appreciate that you did this. Okay. Oh, um, Councilor Carney, did you have any thoughts on that section? Uh, not on that section, no. Okay. So moving on to the next section, um, the at-risk downtown populations and quote, panhandling. So this was the one that I, um, Councilor Bidwell did some and then I uh, worked on it as well. So I, I re-watched I re the video from our meeting from last time and really, you know, tried to... Sorry you had to be... <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I thought it was a very, I thought it was a lovely discussion. I thought everyone expressed really, um, you know, genuine and heartfelt and, and compassionate thoughts about this. And, um, and I was happy to go back and look at it. Um, again, and, and I just want, I, I hope that I was able to sort of capture what you wanted to, you both wanted to say and express so beautifully yourselves. Um, and and that we were taking a step forward to reframing this um, in a way that feels comfortable to everyone. But that being said, please um, tell me your thoughts and. Well, I appreciated that um this was really focused on being able to provide help to at-risk populations without at the same time um, levying what we have seen in the past as just derogatory kind of comments about people who are in that position of panhandling and uh, and refraining from even using any of the stuff that you know referring to it as pesky or annoying or irritating or those types of things even though People, I, I appreciated that uh, the focus instead on um, understanding that people who may be at risk may may need services, and that's that's what we're talking about here. Um, and also, this I, I, I appreciated the um, was it Albert? It wasn't Albuquerque. It was which city? I'm sorry. New Haven. Was it New the one Haven? that I just sent around? Yeah, that yeah. Was announced last week. Was New right, Haven. right. I mean, the idea that people might give, you know, so there's the idea of the frog, but you know, in some different capacity. Um, I can appreciate that as being able to have, you know, some public ways for people to, you know, put money in if they if they choose to do that, and as opposed to um, panhandling. The only. Um, I think that it's it's helpful that we're writing that without also introducing this notion of the problem of panhandling that um, that has been framed in ways that has been problematic in itself. So. I also appreciated the framing. There are a couple things <laughs> in my, the way that I do. I kind of made a couple of little tweaks. Um, the second paragraph where this bolded. Mm -hmm. I would love to see if you guys are open to it. Um, you see where it says to explore non-ordinance ways of addressing. I would love to see to explore non-ordinance and non-punitive ways of addressing the needs. Because I think that strengthens that whole concept that we're trying to kind of get across. And then, um, there's one other thing, and I know this is going to be a little bit more controversial. The second bullet point about the community outreach officers. Um, the comment that I have there, I, I'm not particularly in favor of including that bullet point just because I feel like it singles out the police as a city resource 
for interacting with at-risk folks, and I think that implies that um, de facto there's a management role for police. Um, and the term at risk should refer to the well-being of folks, not to not focus on their potential for criminal behavior or um, disruptive behaviors and actions. And if we're really kind of trying to consistently be clear that we're not just focusing on the disruptiveness or the potential criminality or those kinds of things, I, I just feel like citing the police specifically as a resource in this just doesn't feel right to me, but. Can I, so um, I certainly take your point in, in how, in the appearance of that, that, so actually I added that, and the reason I added wasn't, um, had nothing to do with criminality, is, is that, that I happen to know for a fact um, that the officers who do the community outreach downtown have made a have made a great effort to get to know people individually and personally, and have had conversations where they can name every one of them and know stuff about them and know about their families, and and, it's, and from a very compassionate, personal point of view. And in some ways, I mean, and I this came out of a conversation where I had with someone else who lives downtown who like didn't know the name of anybody, and and I was. I was talking to an officer who was like, oh, that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so, and they, and it was from a very different place of, um, of, you know, we care and we're taking the time and the effort to get, to, to recognize these people as individuals who have identities and have pasts um, and have needs, and so that's where it came, that's the place it came out of for me. I can understand the perception since it's the only agency that we name, but I just want you to know that that's why I, I am here, because it's, it's the agency I know, um, or the, the city department I know that has sort of the most direct, other than Peg, who also I think really knows everybody, um, or makes a real effort, but um, really has tried to um, just recognize people as people and, and try and... Well, is there a way to refer to the NPD in their social service capacity. Like, well, that's kind of also when you go onto their website and you read about the community outreach. Like it, it is very much from that. But I understand this is taking many. This is taking information that I have and that I've taken the effort to look into. So I come at it from a different perspective than someone who might just be reading it and is not is viewing it as more of a, a criminal aspect. Uh, another alternative might be additional resources for various outreach workers um, because um, there are you know, there, there are at least three besides the police department there, there, are, there are other organizations that have outreach workers right I was just trying to focus on what the city outreach does right but I think uh, it's legitimate for us to want to aim to get resources to the outreach workers whether they're city or not in, in, in this in this context well sure and I, I sort of felt like that this whole section was about how can we increase resources for for organizations across the board but this was again I, I, I don't mean to be defensive but this was just my attempt to to sort of highlight something that I know is being done really positively but that, I, that's fine I think I think that's true and I think that especially under our new chief there's been a real effort to um, create that kind of um, interaction with the community with all you know, people everywhere. We have a, a an incredible community outreach. Of, what what are their, their titles? The ones that are in Leeds. We have this you know great officer who right. um, is really established, really lovely relationships with everybody in the in the town, um, in the village of Leeds. But I do think that focusing again on the police, because yes, you know they're they they can be very useful in referring somebody in a hard place to a social service agency but it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's also necessarily gives them contact with people um, with the the other kind of piece of it being that they may need to contain or arrest them at some point I think that is the role that police primarily do play in our community. I don't think we can deny that. I also think that many of the people who are on the street and in the position of panhandling are people of color and they're people who have um, had really difficult uh, relationships 
I mean, not across the board, of course, I'm generalizing, but I've had really difficult relationships with law enforcement. And so to, again, kind of single out the police as the people who are gonna be playing that outreach role, no matter what the thinking behind it is, the way that it kind of um, lands for people that have been uh, targeted by police and law enforcement in the past is not gonna be necessarily positive. So I absolutely applaud the police department for trying to turn this around and I think the NPD is particularly good at creating positive community relations in ways that other law enforcement bodies aren't. Um, but again, just to single it out, just to me smacks of a little bit of that same framing that we have to have some kind of law enforcement interaction with the people who are at risk on the streets. And I would like to avoid that. If you guys feel really strongly about it, it's, you know, I certainly won't block anything here, but. Um, no, that's fine. We can take, we can suggest community. Or as, as Maybe the council did <coughs> well suggest. Our various outreach workers. Yeah, NPD community outreach officers and other we can even, we also can just social say, service outreach um, professionals or something I, like I mean I think if you say into other social service outreach professionals it put it loves the, the MPD into that social service capacity rather than its law enforcement capacity which is kind of what the community outreach piece is meant to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's certainly fine with me if you're comfortable that's great with that. thank you thank you for listening to all that. The only other thing I have in this section is the last bullet point. I would suggest again that we add um, where it says what can the city council do? What can the city council and other city offices and committees and commissions do to be of additional help? Because again, we're going to have this conversation with more than just the council. Yep. Yep. So that's all I have. Um, an open media <coughs> question. When I send this, I guess I would send it to you, Pam, and then you share it with the committee that my edits and that gets around the issue of deliberation, correct? Right. So if I had, in fact, wanted to, I, I, I wrote to Council Did Well this afternoon, I said, I have these edits and I can send them to you ahead of time, or but we were worried about kind of serial communication. So do others here kind of have a thought about that? Is it that it was right that you didn't do it? Yeah. Since he and that I That would have been already, three of us. Right. Since That's he and I had already right. worked on the document, okay. then that would have been. So I think, I think we're in the clear the way we've handled it. So if I had sent it to Pam, and Pam had sent it to all of us, that would have been OK. But to send it directly to, to another counselor wouldn't have been OK. Is that, is that the clarification that I need around open media? I don't know whether you can actually send out the edits because yeah, are the edits themselves a deliberation yeah. of a document? I mean, so that means the only reason I can send the edits now is because we've talked about it publicly. And we're in public. We're in public meeting right now. Going through that. Yes, and, and, and you okay. would be just as a sort of a, 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 them, a yeah. clerical function, almost sending along what had been discussed. Okay. Thank you. I still get fuzzy about these details. Yeah, I'm well. Sorry. It's, it's, it, that's a, probably the strictest interpretation of open meeting law, but you know, certainly sending them to me. You know, had you sent them to me and said, you know, we, we, I'd like to discuss these, you know, at the meeting, I may have, you know, sent them out and, you know, and said, you know, please do not hit reply all or something, you know, so that. Right. That wouldn't have been any different than me sending it out to everybody and saying, don't hit reply at all. Yeah. So that might have been useful just so people could have had, so. well, those of you that have laptops. Or well, I'm, I'm, I'm finding my way through this world of open meeting law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. If, if, if it was there. <laughs> no, it was. It was helpful. Okay. Um, okay. So moving on to workers' issues. Um, should I give a little update about what the conversations have been? So um, I think the last time I spoke, there was some understanding that uh, the mayor the mayor would issue an executive order with regard to procurement and licenses. 
and that the city council would um, consider an order to um, that would relate to the licenses that it has jurisdiction over, and that um, there also be some language with regard to the CPA and TIF. And so um, in a subsequent meeting that we had with the mayor and the uh, city solicitor, um, you know, a lot of this is kind of gets down to um, the, the different bodies, governmental bodies, and what uh, amount of authority they had. And, um, Alan Seawald kind of concluded that um, with the mayor, you know, that they thought that the city council ought not be directing to, certainly to the license commissioner or to the mayor, you know, we don't have that authority. And also to the CPC or with regard to the CPA. So where initially we had been considering putting in an ordinance that would change, you know, that would look at the CPA ordinance and amend some language to allow for wage and hour compliance of applicants. Um, in our discussion with the mayor and, and Alan, we decided that, you know, the CPC, because it's an independent body that's governed by state law, uh, that they ought to put forward their own um, stipulations and conditions, which they do for applicants generally. And that what would make the most sense would be a resolution. And the mayor suggested that he actually co-sponsor a resolution that might come from uh, Councilor Klein and myself that would um, address the issues of wage theft as we've heard them in our forums and we've talked about them and would call on the license commission to tie license to well it basically would be more general in the resolution would call on the license commission to ensure that its applicants are in compliance with wage and hour law would call on the cpc to ensure that its applicants are in compliance with wage and hour law and to do that um what we offer what other cities and towns have done is um tied a certification form with an application. So a licensed applicant signs a certification that says that they're in, in, in compliance with wage and hour law. It's a it's an app legal affidavit, so it's a you know it's a serious form. And it does allow for wage bond options for applicants who can't certify, meaning they have a violation against them in the last three years. And so um, what the, what the mayor and Alan had suggested was that that would be language that, I mean, we wouldn't put that, we wouldn't put that specific detail in the resolution, but I think it would be understood that we're calling upon them to do that and then at their meeting, you know, um, it could be more specific. But uh, similarly with, with the CP, CPA, um, there was some real concern by the solicitor around clawback language, and we talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, uh, their concern is more that the applicants that we typically fund under CPA are the, uh, are the lenders, even. You know, that it's HAP Housing who lends the money, in this case here, to, for, for the project down the street. And for the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, well, this is the example that you know it's kind of frustrating. But the most extreme example is, let's say, that there's a person, you know, some sub subcontractor down the line who's doing some floor finishing work under the table for a thousand dollars. Who is then liable for? If we're saying that, I mean, that would be a wage and hour violation that would be a subcontractor under the sub and under a general contractor, under the developer. And the developer or the uh, lender in some cases is our applicant. And so the clawback language was problematic for the mayor and was just, should we go after, for example, half housing three years from now when there was somebody who, you know, did a thousand dollar job, you know, it, it, at any rate. So there was some detailed discussion and conversation around that and some real reticence to apply a clawback, but an agreement, an understanding that what we could do is ask the CPC to enact 
to to uh, require in its conditions and stipulations for applications certification by the applicant, contractors, and subcontractors. So they at least sign it, sign an affidavit as their with their bid that a bid would be incomplete without the affidavit declaring that they are in compliance with wage and hour law. And you can actually, I mean, someone can cross check that on a, uh, I think it's actually on the um, Attorney General's website where you can link to anybody who had wage and hour violations. So, but also it's with the understanding that, you know, people are going to be, think twice about checking off that they don't have wage and hour violations if they do. The TIF part was a lot more clear cut, and the mayor had not really uh, any problem with um, <clears throat> applying those uh, conditions to our TIF language that we have right now, saying that applicants for TIFs will need to certify, or and actually putting the clawback in there that we typically we we have done clawback on other conditions that haven't been met, job creation and other things like that. So he doesn't see that there's a problem with that piece. It's more the CPA piece. And so we, we were kind of left with that, with a council resolution that would declare the problem and talk about our, you know, our present, our previous commitments to uh, local labor, local, by local and local business and fair labor. Um, and then to call on those independent, well, those bodies, the CPC and the License Commission, to uh, ensure fair labor for fair wage practices. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I, I think so. So in terms of what would be referred, I don't know that much would be referred, actually, because orders aren't typically referred, Pam, right? They, they can be. be. They can yeah. be. And so like the city council rules come under an order. Okay. And you guys do refer those to committee. Well, what we're looking at would be an order. The order, the only order that the council would consider would be looking at those licenses that we, because most of the licenses, especially those that impact workers, are under the license commission: alcohol, license, liquor license, food and beverage, those, those things. The ones that the city council considers are like ones that we took up at the last council meeting for secondhand dealers bowling and billiards I mean we could have the process where that that particular language comes back to this committee for consideration or we could know that that's going to be part and parcel of the package the package would include the resolution calling on the CPC and the License Commission the administrative order executive order that would deal with all procurement and vendors city vendors and the mayor's prepared to bring that forward with our resolution we have to co-sponsor a resolution. And then, you know, the follow-up would be the CPC writes in that language and the License Commission also writes in that language in their policies and procedures. So, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of back at the drawing board in a way in terms of, um, uh, you know, drafting a, re a resolution is going to be different than the language. And the resolution, I think, you know, we can probably, but it's been, I mean, as we know, it's been many, many, many months. Um, there was some talk that we could possibly bring this forward at the second meeting in January. I, I mean, it's possible we could bring it at the first meeting in January, but I think we need an understanding. There needs to be a conversation that the mayor at least said that he would have with the License Commission, and I've had some conversations with CPC committee members trying to get a meeting with the CPC chair, Brian Adams. Um, so, so this, this resolution, council resolution co-sponsored by the mayor, would uh, ask the License Commission and the CPC to uh, uh, incorporate this in their, in their, in, yeah, in, in, in the I, way I they do business. And, in other words, we're not in position to tell them to. We're we're just we're just asking them, and then uh, the, the mayor language I use was calls on calls on yeah, and then and but then to actually be sure that it happens, 
Well, they can say no. They can say no. You can call on us to do it, but you know, I mean, we, but I think we have the understanding that we. That's why we're working on the underside here with different. So uh, Jeff Jones is a member of the CPC Commission, the CPC, and also a member of the Way the Way Stuff Coalition as a member of the as a business rep for the UFCW. He has said that he would like to, since they pretty much disposed of all their funds in the last, we just we just allocated all of them. They're a little bit of a dead time. <clears throat> He's prepared to um, talk about it at their first meeting in January and see if they can come up with some language. But that language wouldn't need to be in effect at the time of our resolution. It's more that, you know, they're, they're thinking about, and, and I would imagine that people would come to the committee and say, this is what we're looking for which is basically to ask what, what folks from the, that have expressed concern about construction, building trades and construction um, problems with CPC funding have said that, of course, they would like it to be something where there would be a clawback if there was a violation on the job. There's a concern that there aren't adequate consequences to actually compel businesses to, to to do what we're asking them to do, right? Well, we can we, we, we can compel them to attach an affidavit with their application because if it's not attached, it's not complete, and it goes into you know out there. But if if the only thing we get around the CPC around the CPA is asking that applicants, contractors, and subcontractors, so that would be another condition of the CPC, so that anybody on the job. With their, with their bid that they submit for whatever portion of the job, CPA funded job they're on, they test that they're in compliance with wage and hour law. But, last but as a practical time. matter, when someone is coming before CPA, uh, will they, 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 they probably have a contractor, but do they have all their subcontractors even in place at that time? No. So what they do is they say, yes, we will agree. We'll take your $150,000. We will agree that we won't okay. be in, and we will require all our contractors okay. and subcontractors to have you. similar attached to their bid. That's about as far as we could get around CPC. Right. Okay. But TIF, we can take the money back. We have done it in the past when they haven't created jobs or other things like that. We can do things with TIF because it's a direct uh -huh. relationship. <laughs> I'm box. really sorry. This That's is right. a problem Last with my um, no. books on Any tape. They Siri hears a particular thing, and so she triggers the books on tape. This happened. Was that something I said? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, wow. Wow. So it happens at the weirdest moments because I, if I forget to like turn off the program, right. it will happen in meetings. And because there's I, a contract that the city has with regard to TIF that already sets out the conditions and we they have to create so many jobs you know whatever then this the mayor at least was comfortable with the notion of clawback because we've done it before and it's a direct relationship it's not a direct relationship with for example the floor polisher three subcontractors down from the developer and so they were a little bit reticent as to actually putting that in there and so it's a start, I think, to have at least a declaration or a certification with an application or bid. And then the license piece is pretty self-explanatory. There would be applicants for a license. Um, we're asking the license commission to require that they put in a certification with their mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. Or saying, I have a way, I have violations, and here's a, a wage bond. So as this all pertains to what we <coughs> want to say in this report. I think it just goes back to the first um, part that you, the first, the intro overview. And I think we don't want to talk about an ordinance because there is nothing that we would really do in terms of an ordinance. Right. But a resolution, yes. So, so this, this, several brief paragraphs under worker issues, mm -hmm. page two and three. Are, are you in position based on all this to propose whatever amendments would make this more accurate without getting into yep, the Yeah, right detail? here, in the second paragraph, where you say the committee recommends that draft administrative orders 
and a proposed order, not ordinance. Resolution and order. Proposed resolution and order. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know that the resolution needs to be referred to committee. I was actually going to, I mean, we don't typically refer resolutions to committee. I, this is hot, hot off the printer. Would it make sense for me to pass this around to look at it? I haven't even given it yet to the mayor or the um, other councilor there, but I have some things that we could consider if you thought it was appropriate. So, and well, I didn't make copies, but I could uh, I could read it or pass it around. Um, well, I don't know if it's necessary. I mean, since right. since it hasn't been seen by no. any of the other right. people, and um, sort of this is the agenda item we're on is doing this report, so then maybe not. That's okay. okay. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, I just didn't know whether um, that addresses the questions. So resolution and order. I don't know that it, it says here likely to be referred to the committee. Again, I don't know that orders or resolutions are typically referred out to committee. So we might just deal with those at the council level. Right. Because they're going to be coming to us we from the... We just say uh, likely to be brought to the council or something. Mm -hmm. And then the decision will be made right. later or something like likely that. Likely to be brought to the council. Are reviewed by committee. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you think that that I think likely to be brought to the council. Period. I didn't write a separate resolution supportive of state legislation. Uh, that could be something that could happen, but maybe we should, uh, um, I mean, we could consider that as well. Like yeah, this doesn't commit us, it just says we right. express interest, possibly, Right. If, if, you know, at the right time, right. if it seemed like it would be helpful. So are you, are you okay keeping that that Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, anything? I have a quick question. Um, in the second paragraph under worker issues, I'm curious if it was um, intended to not use the term wage theft anywhere because it says to develop, uh, to develop city responses addressing these worker issues. And um, because what we are bringing forward is addressing wage theft related issues. And I, I can imagine that you might have thought maybe it, it would be too inflammatory to use that term, but the, I mean, it is more accurate to say wage theft related issues as opposed to these worker issues, which is kind of broader. I mean, it's not, it's uh, and, and not so which, um it says, councilors Klein and Carney have been meeting with the mayor oh. and the city solicitor to develop city responses addressing these worker issues. And I'm just suggesting we say wage theft related issues. Okay. It's fine with, fine with me. Um. Um, just on a related thing, I mean, when I was writing the resolution, <clears throat> I didn't write, I wrote it as a resolution declaring Northampton a fair employment city rather than an mm -hmm. anti slash wage theft resolution. So you should mm -hmm. use that term here to be yeah. consistent. It's good. Yeah. Addressing, what is it? Say it again. Fair employment issues. So, so we could call, call call this whole section fair employment issues rather than worker issues. Is that, is that a suggestion? I think you should still see it as worker issues because you have a lot of things under here about around the comments that mm -hmm. talk about fear of retaliation okay. and Plus dangerous work conditions. That we're paying attention to workers. Yeah. Okay. It is it is how we titled that sort of section of the book. Okay. Okay. I think that's I got, I, I'm, I'm following you. 
this is what's hard about editing something in a group. Is I know. It feels so good picking when you're doing it out loud. I think this know. is going swimmingly. I know. I, I, don't, don't say anything. We're doing fine. <laughs> um, okay. So if there's nothing left on that, moving on to, to overall state of the downtown economy. And it's usually by, with a sign, too, that says loading zone, or? I don't want the answer to okay. But they're specified in the, uh, in the order. Oh, where they are. Okay. This was in direct response to the woman who came yeah. to the council meeting that I just got a ticket. Bird, bird cage. Right. Right. right, right. We were listening. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, only I, in my tenure on TPC, and you can maybe talk about yours, we haven't really talked about rail very much at all. I'm not really sure it kind of falls under the purview of it. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really sure if that's something mm. TBC would work on at all. Um, it's kind of more of a mayoral. Well, there, you know, the, 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 the mayor's policy. passenger yeah. rail advisory committee, I think, is essentially <clears throat> defunct, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling it is. I've heard nothing about it in a long time. There were, he pointed a couple, and the, the, there, there was also a, an economic development advisory committee that both have sort of fallen by the way. So. Yeah. So I'm is not. There's I'm, something in the public comment that this addressed specifically. Did someone speak specifically about rail? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. More than one person was it? Kind of a broad. I think there were a couple. Well, yeah, we've got our tally sheet there. Tally sheet. Uh, the, the helpful tally sheet. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking the TPC to have some discussion and see if it's even something relevant or... We can. I mean, I was just, I was going to suggest that um, it, it might be better put under our, um, as in our opinion piece as something that, you know... But I think Mender. the good piece of the good part about having it um, have, have having the TPC just even bring it up as a discussion is that in that room you will have Wayne Feigen, the director of planning, who's also very connected to the Pine River Valley Planning Commission, and um, folks that I think are connected to the PBTA. Um, just so that's that's the place where it's most likely people will be sitting that have some relationship with that as a topic and might just have updates and mm -hmm. they might be able to even volley it back to us with a recommendation about what the council should do or our committee should do. So I, I would be in favor of leaving that there for you folks well, to just have a quick discussion about it. It doesn't obligate you to anything beyond the discussion necessarily. Um, I'm happy to bring it up just, just to just to keep attention to it, the commission may very well say nothing really we can do much about. Mm -hmm. But at least we know that we've heard as an issue, the concern that there's not been a lot of talk for a lot of years, and it's slow to happen. Maybe we could just instead of instead of doing that, we could just ask for an update from the the commission and the mayor 
as to where we're at with policy around that or any work that's being done at the <coughs> state level around it or just some kind of update so that we can decide if we want to somehow tackle it? Um, Does that make it more, if we change the language to just requesting an update or, I mean, I, I feel pretty certain that Wayne Fiden would have some kind of update. Who else is on there that maybe the, um, uh, some of her BPW also might, uh, I don't know. Could be right there. Okay. Any other traffic engineers? Do you have any masters in the Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I feel like the mayor and Terry <coughs> would be the most. Right. I think Terry's probably the person most on top of it. Well, we, and we certainly can mention it in our in our so-called op-ed piece too. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's a that's a that's a critical piece. Looking forward. Right. Um, okay. Anything else under the TPC section? No. So, moving on to the conclusion. general comments I don't know if they fit under the conclusion but just kind of overarching questions um, so I'm just gonna kind of read the comment that I put here and track changes do I, maybe we moved away from this idea when we kind of changed the format a little bit but I was wondering if we want to mention that members of this committee will serve as kind of liaisons to the stakeholders in various aspects of the downtown business economy moving forward so that we as a committee, we as members of the committee can have kind of a sustained role in, in these issues beyond the report. Because we had talked about that as a possibility in terms of, um, we talked about Councilor Bidwell being connected to the discussion about the adverse populations, me doing the uh, piece about events and arts maybe we let go of it, but I'm just wondering if there's a way in which we can frame our ongoing commitment as a committee to these issues, kind of like the old SSBCR had this ongoing discussion, kind of conversation with different bodies. So just some way to make clear that we are not um, kind of abandoning this topic. Mm -hmm. It also, I think it identifies us as the people for the stakeholders. If they have things they want to kind of approach us about, they can be in touch with us and there can be just an ongoing kind of a living, breathing conversation about these issues. Okay. So that's one question I had. The only other question I have here is something that's kind of fallen off our plate a little bit and we, it's called the downtown business economy but we don't have any mention of the center of Florence and I think it did come up here and there in the public comment period. And it was supposed hearings. to be about both right. downtown. Right. So if there's, if we can kind of go back and find those pieces that were about Florence and work those in, I'd like to see that in the report as well. So those are my two questions. On, on the first, would, would, are, are, would you suggest, for example, that we, in that concluding sentence, we say specifically, Councilor Klein has offered to serve as liaison to the arts, events, well, promotion group. Put it under those topics too, and that that's a question for me: is is one of us going to be kind of the person who attends the forum that gets? or would it be the whole committee and it would become a public meeting? What did we imagine there? Because it could be more appropriate to say, you know, <coughs> we will ask the mayor to convene with, you know, Councilor Blah Blah as the contact or the liaison to the committee. And we uh, I remember we, dis we discussed, specific. for example, that a critical piece of this, um, Arts and events and promotion forum would be the, the, the working group that puts it together, and that's where you would play a critical role. Is that you know in, in, in the working group planning it? Once once planned, it could very well be that it's an event that we're all at. Or that, that was my 
recall some discussion to that effect. I mean, it says the committee, with the cooperation of the mayor, the committee join with other groups to host a one-time forum. Mm -hmm. um, so we would be seeing this as a public meeting with, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I certainly don't see any problem with saying whether it's there or whether it's in added that conclusion. So I guess in the conclusion, I would love to see a little bit of language. It just says something about how we consider this our uh, purview in an ongoing way or into the future, and some you know we'll have these sustainable relationships with uh, the the members of the forums that we put together or something like that just to show that we're not kind of like walking away. Mm -hmm. Well, I have heard around this table a certain sentiment that at some point we will be ready to um, uh, well, to, close to, to declare, study. declare declare victory and hand it off. <laughs> um, who have I heard that from? I'm not sure that's exactly what I said, but um, yes, that we need to close the study out. Um, and I mean, I guess I want to be careful about, you know, setting up expectations about sort of relationships with individual counselors and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I do, I think it, it is good to sort of make more, um, make a, a more of a point of saying that, you know, this is the purview of this committee mm -hmm. and we welcome, you know, further thoughts and, you know, any anyone wants to share other ideas or something. It's not that we will, we are now done discussing the downtown's economy. We are still I, there's a, talking about the, it. The, I almost think and in, in, you know around around all these issues there's there's a certain sensitivity with the mayor as to what our ongoing role is and and I, I have a feeling we might <clears throat> this report might be better received, frankly, if we don't make explicit an expectation of that continuing involvement, but just informally agree, agree that we want to do it to the extent that it continues to make sense. Because I, um, I, th I think we might be better off not explicitly stating it. Okay. And I'll refer to you, Councilor Sharp, since you, you were also in the meeting where we talked about some of this with, with, with the mayor. and got a sense of where the lines right. might be drawn. Right. I think we are we are making recommendations and um, and but yes that we are careful about what we can promise and, and where our jurisdiction lies. What about just one like a simple sentence that kind of concludes the report that says, uh, you know, this committee looks forward to continuing to, um, you know, helping or playing a role in the vibrancy of our downtown economy or something like that. Because I, I mean, the truth is, I think it is part of the purview of this. Well, without being defensive, tell me how that last sentence doesn't oh, say sorry. that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Let me look at it. <laughs> it's true. It says vibrant, doesn't it? Um, let's see, how the looks forward to staying involved. Oh yes, indeed, you did say that. Yeah, that's great. I take it all back. I was see, no, 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 you just successfully you channeled your thinking to me, and I, I got it in there. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I was just trying to step back from the liaison concept and just repeated what Gary said. And I can see to your first point, uh, under the topics for this forum, arts downtown, one, one of them could be uh, in, you know, be in, in some fashion um, being certain that uh, arts events and promotion, you know, fully, fully incorporate the Florence community. You specifically say it. Um, 
What about our report, though? Is there anything else that's specific to the center of Florence? Um, People in Florence don't call it downtown Florence. They I know. <laughs> Is that true? Right. I've never heard Florence of Center. Refer to, yeah, to, to, refer to it as Florence, downtown. Florence <laughs> Center. Sometimes you hear about it. Florence Center. certainly, I've been taking careful notes and can certainly go back and incorporate what I've heard and then and get that to you, Pam, and then your, 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 your specific uh, comments could also go to Pam. And then if Pam pulls it together, then we've got everything in there and I've still been good with open meeting law. Is that is that make any sense or is there a better way to do this? And then I can attach it to the to the minutes of the Yes. Minutes of the of this meeting. Yes. I think that that's fine. And then and then we call that the document that that you'll find out exactly how it gets transmitted to Council President and Vice President and where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. And if uh, any of us still feels we haven't quite nailed it, we always have a chance to revisit it as part of looking at the minutes when we come back to it. So, but in the meantime, we would consider it the working document. Yeah, so should we wait until our next meeting and look it over one final time before we submit it to? The council president? Is that what you're suggesting? No. no. Oh, okay. I, I, I feel we've got, we're close enough to a meeting of the minds and we're pretty, pretty much in agreement with the wordsmithing. Um, and particularly if, if you've got some specific wording that you can suggest, and I'll try to capture what I heard here today. But between that, I would hope that we would have confidence that that's going to capture it closely enough that we consider it a working document that you could forward. Okay. And if any, if there's anything that we any of us really has a problem with, we can always come back and do a do a correction in a month. But in the meantime, I think we should consider the working document. Okay. So we can move on. Okay. That's that's fine with me, and I can come and work together to get it finalized yeah. and incorporate yep. everything when we get it. Mm -hmm. um, can I make what? So in back to the conclusion, can we just change the first sentence? Instead of saying concludes its work on the committee study request, which I think is sort of not what we're trying to say because we have more that we're going to do from this, it concludes, you know, or closes the request, maybe. Um, so the committee. What about just concludes the report in response to the request or something like that? Because we're concluding the report, but we're not. Or concludes this 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 phase of our work. Yeah, and if you read what the a report, I mean, it's we really are just supposed to give our. That's sort of the conclusion of it is when we give the reports. But I, I think saying that we conclude our work isn't really accurate since we're so it still stands a ready for any future requests. How about concludes its study? Concludes its study on the committee study request. You didn't like the future request? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, okay. getting back, I'm getting back to that. I'm sorry. I'm going to think of one thing at a time. Conclu concludes. Um, it's study, and you, then you would say something to the effect of the, whatever the title was for the, for the commu uh, committee study request. Okay. Concludes its study of the downtown economy. Uh -huh. um, okay. And we should submit an um, amendment to the council rules that says one study per term. <laughs> I mean, so far 
arm. It yeah. seems to be that way, but yes. Um, okay, stands no, ready. I, 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 I'm, I'm I, back I, to I think the, sta the stands ready is kind of in the poem. But concludes was, its, its study <laughs> concludes its study of the downtown. Well, and then we can draw you look at the actual language. Right. But when it was referred to the study of the downtown economy. Right. Okay.